Welcome to Archaeologists Behaving Badly. I'm Belle. I'm Raquel. And today we are doing episode eight. 18. And it's on pirates because we had someone actually message us who listens to it, not watches it, um, saying that they love it and they wanted to hear more about pirates. So, so thank you very much. Thank you so much for sending us a message. We love that. And also to everyone on YouTube who has been like responding and stuff and commenting. We really, really appreciate we it. We really appreciate it. And um, we've loved to see what everyone says. So yeah. it's been great. And we're trying to respond to people. Neither of us are great with online anything. Yeah. So we're doing our best. Yeah. <laughs> and we also like work. So yeah. we're very busy. Um, but yeah, we try. And anyway, I'm really excited about this episode. Um and I'm starting. You are. And you've said that you've gone on a tangent this time, which I, I did last time. So yes, I have gone on a tangent and I apologize in advance. Um, <laughs> so um, I also haven't reread this. So this will be interesting for all of us. Um, okay. So um, when I was like researching pirates, I kind of went down a weird tangent looking at not what we would um, normally kind of look at or think of when we think of pirates. Yeah. Um, I started going down this hole looking at Barbary pirates. Have you heard of them? No. So Barbary pirates, um, operated primarily from the Barbary coast, which includes present day Algeria, Tunisia and Libya. Okay. And, um, these pirates were actually active from the 16th century to the 18th century. Ah. Um, so a little bit earlier than I think what we tend to like think of, like, yeah. you know, we usually think of, um, the 1700s and the, I think in the he, Caribbean, yeah, the Caribbean kind of thing, but we don't really think about piracy happening elsewhere, but this is still the time of the slave trade. And yes. that's like when it, it, it all was happening yeah. at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I definitely touched on that because it's, I think a part of the slave trade that we don't often hear about um it's like just a different aspect of it um anyway so their activities extended far beyond the mediterranean um reaching as far as the north atlantic and even the english channel and i think they even reached iceland wow yeah i'm pretty sure iceland like they went very very far mm. and usually i guess with piracy as well we think of pirates in pirate ships um basically taking over other ships or merchant ships. Yeah. Whereas this was not only that, but also um, terrorizing entire towns and villages along the coast. Right. It was, yeah. So it's just like kind of a broader aspect of it, of piracy in so general. So just docking, is that what you call it? <laughs> in a port and yeah. then just like... Rampaging. Rampaging. Very kind of like Viking-esque, yeah. I would say. That's kind of like my feelings yeah. towards it when I was like reading up on it. Um, anyway, the Barbary Corsairs, um, that term, um, I think it's Corsairs, I think it's how you say it, um, uh, relates to not only like the term that they used for the ships themselves, okay. but also for the people that were on those ships okay. kind of doing these things. Yeah. Um, so they called themselves the Barbary Corsairs. And they were known... Um, and instrumental in the Mediterranean's complex web of maritime, maritime power, trade, and conflict. Um, where the conventional pirates such as Black, Blackbeard and others were feared for, you know, again, terrorizing merchants, these guys were more on a broader scale. Um, so during the 16th century, so the 1500s, um, the Barbary pirates were a dominant force. They um, conducted raids with remarkable efficiency, targeting mer merchant ships and coastal settlements. They captured thousands of Europeans who were often sold into slavery in North Africa. And it's just a part that I don't think we... We don't learn it. We don't learn that, much, that much about, about that. Um, um, and this period saw the rise of piracy, a significant geopolitical tool, with many of the courses receiving support from the Ottoman Empire and local North African states. So it wasn't just... Again, we look at... We think of pirates as being like individuals yeah. going against um 
I don't know, going against the crown or the, the crown, whatever. When this seems more like it was state sanctioned, if anything. Interesting. It's like a, you know, fuck you. We're going to get back at you for all the shit that you've done. Anyway. <laughs> Um, so, um, they captured thousands of merchant ships and repeatedly raided coastal towns. As a result, residents abandoned their former villages of long stretches of the coast in Spain and Italy ah. because they were just so fearful. There would probably be some really cool archaeology along yeah. there of yeah. these places that just got abandoned. Yeah. And if you think of like shipwrecks and stuff. Mm. I've never, this was the first time that I really kind of encountered shipwrecks that were from this, from this group of people, um, Mm. which I thought was really interesting. Um, Anyway, the raids were such a problem that coastal settlements um, were seldom undertaken um, until the, I don't know what I wrote there. (laughs) (laughs) I'll just take that bit out. Um, (laughs) I don't know what I meant. That's fine. Um, Between 1580 and 1680, Corsairs were said to have captured about 850,000 people. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. That's a lot. That's um, a lot of people. That's a lot of people. Um, and from 1530 to 1780, maybe as many one as many as 1.25 million people. Um, but those are estimates. It's very hard yeah. to find legitimate numbers and documents that can really solidify that but some people have suggested it's that many people i probably think it's probably not that seems like insane um but there was a lot basically um some of the corsairs were actually european outcasts and convert and um converts like renegade people um, such as John Ward, um, Simon uh, Dansecker, and the Barbarossa bu- brothers. Have you ever heard of the Barbarossa brothers? Barbarossa means red beard, if I am not mistaken. That sounds right. Yeah. I feel like. I feel like I've heard. Thought, yeah, I feel like I've. Yeah, I feel like I've heard it before in terms of like connected to piracy, mm. but um, I didn't realize that they were from here. Mm. So. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the Barbarossa brothers, who were Turkish, um, took control of Algiers on behalf of the Ottomans in the early 16th century and were also notorious corsairs. Um, the European pirates brought advanced sailing and shipbuilding techniques to the Barbary coast around 1600, which enabled the corsairs to extend their activities into the Atlantic Ocean. Um, Get better at being pirates. Yeah. And with the new technology. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. And the effects of the Barbary raids peaked in the early to mid 17th century. So, yeah, they were a big deal. So interesting. And just. No, I like just. Really. No. I feel like that's what you and I end up picking now most episodes is we're looking at stuff and stuff that we're like what the hell i've never heard of this before totally totally um again i think you know we're just really kind of focused on the caribbean element of it yeah and there's so much other things that were happening that relate to it um so um long after europeans had abandoned or driven vessels in favor of sailing ships carrying tons of powerful cannons um many barbary warships um were kind of not as good, I Mm -hmm. guess. Um, They were galleys, so they were smaller vessels, um, which carried a lot of armed men. So instead of having cannons and, like, these big vessels that had all these things... They would pack them with... They would pack them with people, fighting people. And so that makes sense why they were, like, terrorising coastal towns because you just drop them off and then they kind of do their thing. Um... And according to um, one historian, some of the most notorious corsairs were actually European renegades because I think they'd come from piracy and kind of brought those elements from piracy, like colonial piracy, and kind of brought those elements to them. Um, So I thought I'd talk a little bit about the Barbarossa brothers. Yeah. So they were central figures in this era, um, known especially Auric 
Barbarossa, <laughs> known for his fierce nature and striking red beard. Initially made his mark in the early 16th century. Um, his capture of Algiers in 1516 was a really turning point. It provided a strategic base for further raids and cemented his status as a, as a powerhouse um, in the Mediterranean. Um, after, so not just like some little shit kicker yeah, on a boat stealing stuff. Totally, like, totally. He really like cemented power over a, a large area. Yeah. Um, after his death in 1518, his younger brother, um, I don't know if I'm <laughs> saying any of these things correctly. <laughs> I, <laughs> either this episode or the next one, I definitely did oh. quite a bit of Googling um, how to pronounce things. The next to, one is going to be... try. <laughs> yeah, the next one. <laughs> the next one, I, like, I think I might give up at, at, at a certain <laughs> point. Um, um, so his younger brother... <sighs> how do you spell it? <laughs> That's how you spell it. K- K- Kaya? K-H-A-Y-R. Kaya? How do you say it? It's Turkish. K- Kaya? 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 Anyway, he took the helm, <laughs> whoever that guy is. <laughs> um, he continued his brother's legacy with remarkable success. He was appointed as an admiral of the Ottoman fleet um, and he had naval expertise and, and strategic acumen, um, which led to significant victories. His role in the Battle of Provenza in 1538 was particularly notable. The, ma- the battle was a major confrontation between the Ottoman fleet and the coalition of U- European powers led by the Habsburgs so they were very fully um up against European superpowers of the time also PS side note was the Habsburgs were they the like Spanish family of royals that had so much incest that they looked crazy I think so yeah I have a feeling yeah I think so I can't remember what what it was, but yeah, they had like a really like cleft chin or something like that. Like a big, yeah, underbite and like yeah, a big yeah, yeah. chin. Something. I think so. That's just from like royal inbreeding and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so um, in the 17th century, the Barbary pri- uh, pirates continued to thrive through their influence, um, although their influence began to wane towards the 1600s. Their decline in power was due to a combination of factors, including increasing European naval strength and the rise of anti-pirate policies. However, they still um, managed to conduct raids and engage in occasional skirmishes, maintaining their presence in Mediterranean affairs. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so earlier this year, um, I think it was in August it was reported, um, a verily... Verily? <laughs> <laughs> verily. I'm not even drunk. I swear to God, I'm just very tired. <laughs> I'm tired too and a little bit tipsy. And I think because, so Raquel and I worked on some stuff before we recorded this episode <laughs> and we watched a short. We're going to put up some shorts on YouTube and TikTok and Instagram and stuff from our older episodes when we used to get blind <laughs> drunk and, um, and we watched one and I think I'm feel I feel like I'm being a bit rigid <laughs> and like trying not to seem too drunk because I've just watched myself it was, be a loose cannon. It was too much. Just need to like loosen I up a little to, bit. Yeah, yeah. I just need to like calm down. You know, we're with friends here <laughs> and it's everything's fine. fine. Everything is fine. It's fine if you say verily. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> uh yeah it's fine look it's fine it's fine if i can't pronounce things it's fine everything is fine um a very (laughs) heavily see where i got see see it makes sense very heavily armed ship also called a barbary corsair as i said the ships are also called the same as the people um was discovered in the waters between morocco and spain and i believe it was actually the first Barbary Corsair to be found in its homeland. So I think there's been a lot of shipwrecks that have been found, but they haven't necessarily been found yep. yet. Um, <laughs> there. Out. <laughs> Sorry, if you're um, just listening, I did some sort of dance hands. So. <laughs> um, 
It could hold a 20-person crew, and the artifacts recovered from the ship included... Um, sorry, I thought someone was walking in the <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay, everything is fine. <laughs> I'm on edge. Okay. Um, it could hold a 20-person crew, and the artifacts recovered from the ship included ceramics um, and glass, which helped date the ship sinking to around 1760. Um, the ship held a significant amount of pottery, including Ottoman bowls and ceramics. They were similar to 18th century pot- pottery found in Martyr Square in Algiers, providing evidence that the ship likely came from this region. Uh, the pottery helped state, yeah, the pottery helped date the shipwreck. So I cool. think that's really cool. It's really nice when we can find things that give us a date range that's really like a tight date range, basically. Yeah. Um, there was also a lot of glassware, as I mentioned, um, a lot of glass bottles dated between 1740 and 1760. Um, yeah. A lot of bottles. I'm sure they were drinking a lot. I'm yes. sure that's like a cliche that probably was real. Real. <laughs> um, it was also very heavily armed, um, which is obviously typical for a pirate vessel. Yeah. Um, but it included four large cannons um, for both offensive and defenses pu- defensive purpose- purposes. <laughs> oh, my God. Ten swivel guns. Um, they were smaller and um, maneuverable and also muskets as well. There was also a particular person, um, a woman actually, that mm-hmm. is quite famous um, and also associated with the pirates. Um, with the Barbarossa? No, with the with just the pirate, with the well, general. actually with Barbarossa as well. Okay. Um, so, um, Saida Al Hara, um, from she was born from fourteen eighty four. Born in 1485, I think she died in 1561, um, was a remarkable it's a figure. Long, long it's a long life. time, yeah. Um, she was a remarkable figure in the 16th century. She ruled as the governor of Tatouan in Morocco from 1515 to 1542 and was a notable Moroccan privateer and pirate. Her life unfolded against the backdrop of intense conflict between Muslim and Christian powers following the fall of Constantinople. Constantinople in 1453. Um, so I think she had to escape from Constant. Constant. <laughs> I'm going to start that again, and I'm going to take that out. Why is this so difficult? It's cute. <laughs> Don't be weird about it. Um, so I think she had to flee Constantinople and I think that was because of unrest okay. of, of some description. Um, she was fluent in many languages and was a, a significant political figure. After her husband's I love death, her. I know. After her husband's death in 1515, she stepped into his role as governor um, and became one of the few female rulers in Islamic history. Um, I actually love her. So she allied with the famous Ottoman corsair Barbarossa and led successful piracy operations in the Western Mediterranean. Her corsair activities were driven by a desire for revenge and provided substantial wealth and ransom for captives. She was recognised as a powerful figure in Mediterranean piracy and also engaged in diplomatic negotiations with European powers. Um... She later, in 1541, married um, Sultan of Fez, um, an unusual move as Moroccan kings typically married within the capital. This marriage was arranged on her terms, highlighting her determination to retain um, control over Tatouan. Her um, Her influence extended through her brother as well, whom she appointed as visor and she played a critical role in resisting Spanish and Portuguese expansion. Um, her reign, though, ended in 1542 when her son-in-law um, deposed her. Rude. Very rude. She was stripped of her power and property, retiring in... I don't know if this is, like, just written wrong. I've done that so many times when I've written stuff out and then looked at it and thought, is that what it's supposed to say or have I just... <laughs> have I just completely butchered it? What do you think? 
I see your problem. I see your problem. That's a difficult one. Anyway, she went somewhere. <laughs> she went to a place. Um, and they think her remarkable story may have inspired the legend of Califia, which influenced the name of California. Ah. Oh. That just came up and I want to... Now it's like, okay, well, we need to find out. We what need to find is. out if that's actually a thing or not. But that's pretty cool. And I don't know... Why? Yeah, I don't know why, but I, then again, I don't know anything about the US and in terms of like naming and stuff. I don't know anything about anything. I don't so know anything about anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if I have really any much more to say. You have written lots of words, but you... I feel like I was really good. You don't... I, yeah. You don't need to you don't need to do more. I really but don't like, need look, to go I've, on. I've got three cards. So like <laughs> talk as long as you want because I clearly don't have much to say. <laughs> um, <laughs> um But yes, I think that's all I've got. No, that was really good. It did make me think about I started writing about this and then I was like, oh no, that's too boring. Um so I can't really remember that much about it. But I read quite a lot of stuff about how the archaeology of piracy has been really difficult because, yeah. which I've just never really thought about before, because of the way they led their lives. So aside from shipwrecks, which we lose a lot of information because it's underwater, mm, mm. they... They weren't often, there are pirate settlements, mm. but they're kind of difficult to identify. I think like what they have said is they'll be like, tre like treasure. There'll be yeah. goods that they've stolen yeah. and stuff like that. But a lot of the times they were living on the ships. Yeah. So, or if they were raiding places, they weren't staying there. Yeah, there was. So it's actually yeah. quite a difficult, like most of our information about pirates I think what I was reading was more about Caribbean, but pirates in general. Yeah, hundred percent. Just by the way that they live. The way they live is yeah. Most of the information we have is historical records, not yeah. archaeology, because it's just kind of difficult to. That's a really good point. Um, yeah, I'd never even really considered that before. Um, I did see, and it was we actually. So we actually did record an episode on this um, last year sometime, but. Never made it to it, air. It never made it to <laughs> air. There were reasons. <laughs> um, um, and I think I remember vaguely what I was talking about, what I had talked about then, but I remember... Um, I have no recollection of this episode being recorded. <laughs> Zero. Yeah, we drank, we drank a little bit too much before that. Um, it was an absolute... I mean, it was worse than this, so there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so that says something. Um... Anyway, um, but yeah, they had found, um, I think it was in Mauritius where they had found, um, a pirate, um, cemetery. Oh, cool. Yeah. And they're just there. Like you can visit them and it's like really small and it's like really kind of like hidden away. You wouldn't really know that it's there. Oh my God. That's so cool. Yeah. And because they have like so much like weather, like, I don't I, I would assume there's like crazy weather tropical patterns. like tropical yeah. like you know um a lot of them have been quite damaged but you can read some of the you know some of the <sighs> like stones and stuff yeah um but then again and when I was thinking about it in terms of like physical archaeology on the ground in terms of yeah like physical remains there? there's not a lot and I think that's why it was actually a really hard oop, a really hard episode to yeah. Um, There's actually just not that much archaeology. Yeah, unless you're, like, into, like, shipwrecks and stuff. Yeah. But anyway, very interesting. Very. Okay. Okay. My train wreck is over, <laughs> so we can, <laughs> we, can, we can do yours now. Well, let's, I have let's just leave on a high note. done two short ones. Okay. Very short. Cool. <laughs> um, so, again, like you, I stayed away from the Caribbean. So Okay. So we basically just didn't do what probably the person wants to hear <laughs> about. But so sorry, <laughs> we will do another episode yeah. on pirates. In the Caribbean. In the Caribbean, yes. yes. Yeah. 
Um, so I did one on Zheng Yi Sao or Ching Shi. She went by a number of different names okay. or is known by a number of different names. She was actually born Shi Yang in 1775 and she was a pirate leader active in the South Chi- South China Sea. You've given me I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> the South China Sea from 1801 to 1810. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, okay. I chose her because she has always been my favorite pirate. Um, she is known as the most successful female pirate and one of the most successful pirates in general. Wow. Okay. Um, so she means business. Yeah. Okay. She came from humble beginnings and was possibly a tanker who worked as either a prostitute or a procurer. So like a madam. Okay. Basically. Yeah. Um, on a floating tanker brothel, but there's no actual proof of this. Um, it's just a possibility. I just, I never even considered that, that that would be a thing that, yeah, that makes sense. You've just got a group of guys like floating brothels. Yeah. Okay. Um, she married a pirate named Zhang Yi in 1801 when she was 26. The story goes, he sought her out due to her reputation as a shrewd businesswoman. There aren't primary sources of this but her financial savvy would become undeniable during her career in piracy so maybe it's not true that's why he like wanted her wanted her yeah but she 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 proved herself to be yeah yeah um he hailed from a family of pirates whose roots traced back to the ming dynasty um so like a number of generations of pirates that's what him and his family did. did. So that's like who they were. Everyone knew it. Um, cool. Um, he had an adopted son named Zheng Bao, who was actually someone that Zheng Yi had kidnapped in 1798 when Zheng was 15. Okay, shit. And then like made him become a pirate as well. Okay. Which... I sort of looked it up. It's called pressing. Oh. Like he was pressed into being a pirate and it's uh, forcing people to into like military or. Oh. um, And it was really common. (laughs) Ah. Just kidnapping kids and forcing them to become pirates. That doesn't surprise me at all. It's not surprising. No, because you need, you need labor and you need people. But then became, but but became a legally adopted son. Wow. Because of the like kinship, I don't know, like the laws or whatever that applied to kinship. Mm. They became parents of the people they, kids that they kidnapped. Interesting. Very interesting. Um, Somewhere around... Yeah, somewhere around 1804, there was a lot of infighting between the pirates near the Guangdong coast and Zheng Yi managed to unite all the pirates into a confederation in 1805. The confederation consisted of six fleets known by the colour of their flags, red, black, blue, white, yellow and purple. He commanded the biggest of the fleets, which is known as the Red Flag Fleet, which is quite famous. Yeah. Um, Zheng Yi Sao or Ching Shi had two sons with her husband. So she, she like married him and just became a pirate. She was doing it with him. Yeah. 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 Um, They had two sons and one in 1803 and one in 1807. He died in 1807 when he, the the main story is that he fell overboard in a storm or something. Okay. Who knows? Oh. Um, and she took control of the confederation. Wow. So I think that sounds a little bit dodgy. <laughs> yeah. I reckon she must have pushed him a little just bit. Just a little bit. Well, she also was sleeping with the adopted stepson. What? Yeah. Oh my god. So 
that started happening soon after her husband but, died, but there's theories that it was happening before. Okay, I've so I think at this point I've seen this movie before. Yeah, <laughs> at this point the stepson is like maybe early twenties. She's early thirties. The husband who died is early forties. So she's not sleeping with a fifteen year old, but it still yeah. is like. Mm. Well, it's also weird because. I mean, th- there's a lot that's weird with that. Yeah, there's a lot going on there's there. There's a lot going on there. But, um, yeah, that sounds dodgy. Yeah. And he, Zhang Bao, the stepson, was the commander of the Red Flag Fleet. So Zhang Yi, the husband, was like, his was the Red Flag Fleet, but he was the boss of all, of all the whole of confederation. Them. Right. Um. So when he died, she took over the whole thing. And because the commander of the Red Flag Fleet was sleeping with her and supported her and was like, yes, this is our yeah. leader now. Yeah. So it was fine. She was she was the leader. Um, that worked out very well. That did work out very well very for well. her. Um, so they become a couple. They eventually marry. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, because when she married. This is also the 1800s, right? So, yeah. like, you know. Like, very early. Yeah. Who knows what the fuck the laws were. But when, then. yeah, when she married his adopted dad, wouldn't she become the adopted mother? mother? How can you both be the adopted mother and the wife? Mm. Anyway, we're getting too yeah. caught in the details. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. The Confederation was composed, or at this time, was composed of around 400 junks, which are a type of Chinese vessel. Mm. They're quite small. They're mm. really, really pretty. They have the, like, their sails look like bat wings. Like, they're... Okay, I'm about to get really nerdy here. Good. I think I... Is it in a video game? Yes. That's what I knew. <laughs> I knew you were going down that road. Um, um, Age of Empires, anyone? Anyone? Um, yeah, where you play like different um, civilizations or like people. And y- anyway, I, yeah, there's ships and stuff in it. And if you play the, like the Chinese kind of thing, they have always really, really cool ships and yeah. stuff. So I feel like I know exactly what they're they look like, like. They're beautiful. Yeah. Um, and she was in charge of between 40 and 60,000 pirates. Whoa. And when she was at the helm, they became much more active. Wow. Yeah. So, so they were already very active, but she... She ramped it up. Took it to the next level. Wow. Yeah. Um, and there's heaps of examples of various battles and stuff that they did, but I didn't go down mm. that road. Mm. Um I just listed they entered into some of the major conflicts. Oh. Sorry if you keep hearing the door. Um, were with the East India Company, the Portuguese Empire, and the Great King, the King Dynasty wow. in China, like the yeah, yeah, rulers yeah. Yeah. at the time. Um, in 1810, she nego- – so she's only been in this position for three years. She's well, been a oh. pirate for – Many. Nine, yeah, ten yeah. years. But yeah. she's only been in this position for three years. In 1810, she negotiated a surrender to the king authorities um, that allowed her and her husband's son <laughs> to retain a fleet and avoid prosecution. Sources differ on the motivation for the surrender. Some say it was because the pirate pirates were in such a position of power that they could surrender without punishment because they oh. had been so successful for yeah, a few yeah, years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some sources say that by the end of 1809, the tides were turning against the Confederation. And I think there was a bit more infighting between them. And Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's kind of they had lost, down. They had lost some. So it's – we don't actually know what the reason was, but yeah. she – I mean, she still got out of it the best way possible. Yeah. But that's exactly how you want to – Stop. Yeah. Yeah. So in 1813, she had a son um, and they, the couple also had a daughter, but the year and the name of the child is unknown. 
classic. Classic. No one cares about about the the girls. In 1822, Zhang Bao died while serving as the colonel in charge of the Pengu garrison. So when they surrendered, he ended up working in the military for the Qing dynasty. Wow. Okay. Um, Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. She died in 1844 at the age of 68. Whoa. Having lived a peaceful and prosperous life since the death of her second husband. Um, She, for a long time, was the proprietor of an infamous gambling house. Oh, my God. That's so great. That's so great. (laughs) Isn't it awesome? You can't take the pirate out of the woman. You know what I mean? (laughs) (laughs) Um, Because she was a pirate for... A long time, which I don't know, nine or 10 years doesn't seem like that long, but because of the type of life they led, when you look up pirates, a lot of them really weren't doing it for very long. Yeah. Because it was dangerous. Yeah. Um, Uh, Wasn't the whole point, like, isn't the whole point of piracy is just to get enough, get in, make some, make some money and then live a life outside of that? Like, yeah. Um, So because of her tenure as one, Um, She made a lot of money. She surrendered of her own free will. She got to keep all her money and she lived out her days in freedom. That's why she's described as one of the most successful pirates ever. That's amazing. Yeah. I love her. Yeah. I question her marrying situation, (laughs) but but like she's cool. She's so cool. And one of the characters in Pirates of the Caribbean is based loosely on her. Oh, I think it's in, I watched all of those movies earlier this year or late last year, oh, but did I, can't, you? I can't remember. I need to redo it. They're, f- they're oh like Harry God. Potter. Like I can just watch them and watch them. Oh, I know we've had this conversation. We know how I feel about Harry Potter, but I did. <laughs> sorry. I'm just, I just can't do it. I can't do it. Um, but I do love the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Yeah. I loved them. Like, so I think kid. the character is in. I have a vague One of the memory. Later ones, yeah. maybe three, four, or yeah, 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 yeah. That's really cool. So that was the end of that one, and then I did do a very quick one on the Caribbean. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I just very briefly wanted to talk about Blackbeard, who you mentioned in yours. Yeah, cool. Um, so. His name was Edward Teach. He was born in 1680 in England um, and he died around 1718. Is that right? 38, yeah. Um, So he was a pirate operating around the West Indies and is better known as Blackbeard. Not much is known about his early life, but he may have been a sailor on privateer ships during Queen Anne's War. Then he settled in the Bahamas and joined the crew of Captain Benjamin Hornigold, who was a pirate, in 1716. Hornigold, so that's 1716, and he died in 1718. And I I wanted to talk about him really quickly because Blackbeard is so famous. So famous. Two years. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't realise he died then. Mm. Oh, my God. I mean, that doesn't surprise me as well. Yeah. It's a very... (laughs) Um, Hornigold, so he joins the crew. Hornigold put him in, in charge of a sloop, which is a small vessel. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so not like a big, yeah. it's just like a small one with a single mast and sail. Yeah. Okay. Um, and they engaged in numerous acts of piracy. So at this stage, I think Benjamin Hornigold, he didn't have a big, fleet or anything that it was just like a few Mm, mm. um they added a couple more vessels and then in 1717 hornigold retired and he took two vessels with him so blackbeard keeps going on his own with his own little crew with a couple of ships um he captured a french slave ship named la concorde and renamed her queen anne's revenge which I found interesting because he had started as a privateer during Queen Anne's War. Yeah. So he's, even though he's become a pirate, he's still is like really aligned to, because yeah. he's named his 
yeah, ship, yeah, yeah. Queen Anne's Revenge. Like nationalistic in yeah. a way. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just thought that was interesting. Yeah, I think that's interesting. Um, and he crewed her with 300 men. Um, he was, I don't know what the evidence for this was, but he was rumoured to like not actually be a very violent person. He wasn't into violence, but he oh. liked to portray being scary and that he would do things like put lit fuses attached to his hat and like oh. I think he was just a bit a bit loopy. A bit cuckoo. Yeah. yeah. And obviously known for his big black beard and Maybe. just looked like a big scary guy and did crazy stuff but wasn't actually wasn't actually that violent mm. as in like you know putting up a I don't know making like a an ego like an alter ego kind yeah. of thing to be this big scary um pirate guy that's what I read I don't know if it's true yeah but I I want to think of him as like, like a nice guy I like <laughs> <laughs> that's my version in my head at least yeah um he formed an alliance of pirates uh, and blockaded the Charlestown port in North Carolina, ransoming the port's inhabitants. After this, he actually just settled nearby in North Carolina and accepted a royal pardon. I don't, I didn't, this, I just wrote this really quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how he got that. Yeah. But he did. Um, but then he couldn't keep away from the sea. So I think it was like within like six months he was back at it. <laughs> <laughs> he got bored. Yeah. That's what happens in retirement. That's what they say, right? Like you get bored, you miss it. Yeah. Yeah. So we went back out there and I think started stealing stuff again. Um, and so when he did that, the governor of Virginia sent a party of soldiers and sailors to capture him. There was a big battle on the 22nd of November, 1718, and Blackbeard and a number of his crew were killed. He should have just stayed home. He should have. He should have just stayed home. Um, So the Queen Anne's Revenge ship lies in about 28 feet of water, about one mile off the coast of Atlantic Beach, North Carolina. You know, I think this is what I talked about. Last time? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Because <laughs> I couldn't remember it. And as you're talking, I'm like, I swear I know what you're about to say next. <laughs> well, I didn't write much, so if you have anything to add. <laughs> oh, I don't remember. Um, the archaeological project began in 1996, excavating this shipwreck. And since then, hundreds of thousands of artifacts have been retained. Um, and they are important for reflecting 18th century maritime culture, ship parts, equipment, arms, navigational and medical instruments, personal belongings, food prep, storage items, that sort of stuff. So he was a real guy. There was a real ship. Yeah. We found it yeah. and it's, it, and it's being studied. Um, what we didn't do was say the name of the person who requested it. They don't have a name. Don't they? No, it just doesn't come up with who sent it. It just said that they were from the state of Columbia. Okay. Maybe? State of Columbia. Or maybe That's it wasn't. not a state. Columbia maybe. is a place in Ohio, which is a state. Or would it be Columbia the country? No, it wasn't Columbia the country. Was it? Is it Canada? Oh, British Columbia. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking. Anyway, we don't know who you are, what your name is. But thank you. But thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And we're sorry <laughs> that it wasn't our best work. I am so sorry. This was definitely not our best. Um, that's on me. Um, no, I'll wear not. that. No, it is. Not. It, well, I did a story that you did already, so... <laughs> But they don't know that, so True. it's fine. <laughs> Everything is fine. Next one's going to be better. Sorry. We can't have good ones every time. No, it can't all work out perfectly. <laughs> um, but the next episode is going to be really fun. It will be. And um, thank you so much and continue talking to us. We love hearing from you. Yeah. And we will see you next time. We'll see you next time. Bye.